Today I'm taking you guys back to 2020 when Northern Realms Witchers used to be the absolute meta, I mean the best deck in the entire game, and then it just disappeared. The power creep was real, and I tried bringing it back on numerous different occasions with Golden Necker, and all was great, but I'm talking about the classic Northern Realms Witchers. And today I tried to modernize that list and bring it back for Sunset Gaming. So I'll show you guys what I came up with, but before we get into it, let's roll today's sponsor. Welcome to Kaiju Kaizen, a new and refreshing take on the card battler genre with the strategic elements of chess. Kaiju Kaizen was created by a lifelong CCG player for those alike with the goal in mind to put an end to net decking and eliminate toxic archetypes. You could play for free today by clicking the link in the description and all new players will receive three card packs as a welcome gift. I'll see you there. Thanks again to Kaiju Kaizen for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the deck here, okay? I've been spending a lot of time on this one, and I think I got the recipe down. So what we're looking to do early on is get a bunch of carryover for late game payoff. We have a lot of cards that play on adrenaline, so I tried to eliminate one of the problems that Witchers has and fill up the bronze end with some more things that are proactive that we could play early on so that when it does come to the golds, we could save them for the end of the round and it's a very tough recipe to get right it reminds me of the spending to coin generating ratio you'd get with syndicate for example but i got it down and it's feeling pretty solid at this point so here's how a round would look we have griffin witchers coming down early in the round because these engines damage an enemy unit by one with a cooldown of one and at adrenaline three at the end of your turn damage a random enemy unit by three and lock self now the really cool part about this here is that because we have a lot of slower plays like the offering and the erlin play and the all god you name it we need something to kick it into gear and keep us in the round and prevent us from being overtaken and one of the ways we could do that is with the Griffin Witcher, because if I go and put Crystal Skull on the Griffin Witcher, it's not going to lock itself. So from Adrenaline 3 onward, we're getting 3 points per turn of free damage plus the 1 point per turn order that we have. It's one of the best combos ever for a bronze card in the game, and I love it so much. Now, what we can do to go a step further is I have a Peller here if we want to purify a second one so we can at least get another rotation of it. There is a consideration to go and put something in the deck like a Fortune Teller, but I really think the flexibility of having something like Peller is just better and we don't need to worry about dooming something when we could just heat wave it to hell. So that's pretty much it with why I chose Peller as a tech option over Fortune Teller. But the combo with Griffin Witchers is ridiculous. So we get these down nice and early. And if we need to protect them, if they're getting damaged, we have Vile for that. We have Target Practice for that. All is well. The Griffin Witcher Adept is a really nice defensive play too. Because with this one here, it comes with a shield. So if they're looking to directly damage it, we're talking Skellige, a lot of Skoytel, a lot of Nilfgaard. If you see Madoc bombs going around, stuff like that you have the ability to at least negate some of that damage. And what we could do here is we can go and flip any Witcher that we control into another one of these and sort of swarm the board with it. Now, there are some instances where you want to run this card with something like Keldar, right? So we have Keldar in at 8 provision and... Or King Ragnar, rather. I'm, I'm thinking Keldar. Of course we have Keldar. But Ragnar, in this case, we remove the shields and we boost health by 3 for all the shields removed... This isn't the core strategy. You'll actually see that I took out one of the Adepts because if I really need to go and use that combo more, I can pull one from the Kyre Saren on the Create and Play. I didn't want to focus too much on it, but because I have a lot of potential bricks, I have two anti-bricking scenarios here. So one of them being the Selective Mutation, and this one actually allows us to shuffle back a card and then spawn a couple students. And then I have the ability to get another student off the target practice so right there we're actually getting value for the adept and then when we do play the keldar play and we start getting a student per turn that's when we can really get that shine because now we're spitting out two points from keldar and converting it into two more protected points from the adept for four points per turn so 
the whole way it flows is really cool and I, I just feel like we only need one to make it count and yeah if the strategy gets disrupted it's not all bad news okay once we get down those engines maybe something like a one-off of this and a one-off of this in round one then we can start controlling so the opponent plays something we take an offering we want to play the offerings early if we can to get rid of their engines to reduce the value that they have in round one to help us you know get our carry over and to go into a crazy bleed for round two three all right so we have destroy a unit with four or less power than boost the unit in your deck by two the targets that we're always going to choose are the cards that we know we're going to get so if it's a witcher you're 100 percent safe because nine times out of ten we're getting quinn or we're getting that witcher if you want to be absolutely certain boost one of the trio it's basically i think it's statistically impossible to miss these cards in a game at least one of them right we have so many different ways to draw that you're not going to miss them so boost these to the ceiling and late game you can decide if you want to deploy and summon the other two of them and have just three very tall units or you can decide maybe you want to keep the points protected if you haven't played Erland already and play Erland on Adrenaline so you have immunity and then use the order to remove the boost from the deck and boost self by the same amount. There's a couple different ways to go at it depending on the matchup, depending on the situation and what's been played. So a couple different things there. I think that being able to boost on Seus in deck is really cool. So we have Kyr Saren for that. We have the All God for that. We have the offerings for that. And the benefit is that when we have on say is boosted we could play it on melee with formation use the order right away to do instead of a damage four so it's a duel it's removal on demand whenever we want to it's very easy to set up if we miss deck boosts we have leader boosts if we miss leader boosts we have vile you could just keep going with possibilities for that so there's pretty much that vesemir is a really cool one it's a good finisher card it's a great carryover card it's sort of a just overall flexible cards so we can boost all witchers we control by one if we just play it mid round i always wait for adrenaline so adrenaline four boost all witchers in your hand in deck as well so there is really no incentive to play this early you always want to wait for adrenaline with this so that we're getting even more carryover right and we're talking hand as well as deck so all is well you don't have to worry too much about that and uh that's pretty much it. I mean, to round it off, I have a couple big point slams here. Leary and Scytheman, boost self by one for each boozy unit on this row. At one point, I just want to note, because this is actually very easy to pull off the Scythemans here. Double Scytheman could be greedy. I think it's merited, though. It, it, like, these in around three make sense most of the time, unless you're playing against heavy control. You could just mulligan one back. But at one point, I actually did have Wolfpack. And it wasn't as good as you thought. Because boost self by one for each allied unit on this row. Sure, we could fill up the row, kinda, you know. We could pretty much do the same with the Scythemen. Most of the stuff is boosted by more than one, so it lives. The fact that this is three more base power is a little bit more attractive. The fact that it also kind of matches the theme, like it's in the leader, you know, for crying out loud. So you might as well just stack them out and go with it that way. Uprising is feeling much better at 16 provisions. So all in all very fun deck to play it can be somewhat competitive i don't think it's going to be meta because all the locks that are going around all the poisons that are going around all the you know nonsense that goes around but you know it does have its control it does have its consistency it does have a lot of points so if you're looking for something new to try go ahead and give this one a try i took out temple because i don't think temple at 14 provision is enough to identify the faction anymore Temple could be good in this deck, but we're cutting too much. I want to play Witchers when I call it a Witcher deck. So we jammed it, okay? And it's looking pretty good. That's pretty much it for me. Let's get into the gameplay. I got three games of live commentary for reference. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any recommendations of decks I should try, games I should play, let me know in the comments below. It's good to see you guys as always. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome in. Let's get into it. All right, first up here we have... Nilfgaard Tactical Decision. When I was testing this deck earlier, all I was playing against was Nilfgaard. We actually do better than I thought. Okay, but we just started recording now, so I gotta back it up, alright? 
I like to put these back for round one so we can get the All God buff on them. So we're going to be putting back Vesemir. We'll keep this Vesemir though. But don't get them mixed up. And I don't really need a Scytheman when we haven't done the boosting part yet. So we'll do that. No door is closed. So what? Just clog? Easy offering. I actually have all the answers that I need to take down Colgrim. We have the Peller, we have the Heat Wave. So keep that in mind. I like to boost the trio as my primary targets. Erlen's not a bad bet if we want to play him on Adrenaline. Other than that, we can go for maybe the duel, but... So we don't want them to clog us with bronze cards, so I'm going to try and not play any. For a while, at least. We'll play... All God here first. Basically, if it's a gold card and a Witcher, you're pretty good to boost it. With exception to maybe something like the Beringer, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I think I'm going to do Leo as well. This might not be what I thought it was. I thought it was going to be Colgrim. It could be Colgrim with bombs. I don't know. There's literally no Madoc. Unless it's in their hand, right? I don't mind going Quen for Beringer to get the Thin. Or for Erland, just to get the carryover. Get this over with. If I take Erland, then they probably use the collar to lock him, which is actually not bad. And then I can get away with playing the Griffin Witcher from hand. Otherwise, you just hold it till the end of the round. And let it go for adrenaline points. Then you're going to get the payoff of three. But that's predictable here. Stop your yapping and start digging. Not a big deal. Pops the shield. They're ri like barely ahead too at this point. So. I think I play more into the carryover stuff, but at the same time, I was thinking we go Griffin, but the Adept could be good here, because I have Keldar in this. If they have another Moon Dust, then it's bad, but I think I'm actually going to take a chance here. Easy flip. We flip this right away. We use this right away. We take this right away. When you're going to be playing into Keldar, make sure you're putting stuff like locations and all the stuff that's not very important on one row and put the Keldar swing on the other row. comes the leader we don't have to win the round we just have to see this they're probably getting mad that everything I'm playing is gold if they're trying to clog it could just be slight inconvenience cards with out that really being the core strat I'm gonna go flip this right now. Let's take this here. And I think I'm gonna go and take a boost. We're gonna pad it on one of these guys as well. I 
I'm willing to use leader because they did. So I'm not really worried about it. It's disposable at this point. Everything's already boosted. We have Scytheman in deck. I think that I'm able to push, to be honest with you. Witchers are different than most decks because you want adrenaline, right? A lot of cards gain value the closer that we get. So for that reason... makes sense for me to just put stuff on the board I need one of the trio but even in a short round three it wouldn't hurt so let's see what we could do here we just take we take these it's like a 30 point swing almost too If anything, I put back him. We'll start getting this online and then we can start going with the Keldar. The only thing I don't like here is the fact that Onseis can't get inspired because I did use leader. That's really the only disadvantage, but I have like other backups if we need them. If I take it into round three, we have Vile. Because basically my all gods and then my offerings and then my Kyr Saren, there's a lot of different things here that are, are meant to be. So this part's going to suck. Oh, never mind. I was thinking something else for a second. Set power equal to that of... So I don't have to worry about a removal. Hey, I can see Kaer Saren from here. Unlike some of their coming, I polish my quill. Why the train on the cone? Now we're sitting at four points per turn. We have the widespread payoff off the Mentor. It's actually looking pretty good, except for that. We get it again in the next round. I think I'm allowed to play this now. So what's our plan? Focus on what's boosted the most. I don't think I trust playing on Seus on ranged. I think we try and take them into round three. I'm probably just going to go for the flip, play the Vesemir, and then look to just play Scytheman and leave with one. Uh, they get the perfect value off a of Red Haze if they do it properly. There you go. Good flip for me, though. Really good value on the flip. Amazing value on the flip. I don't have time to get this one perfect, unfortunately, but... doesn't really matter. We just have a lot of points here. Look at that. That's some throne breaker numbers right there. They barely clogged too. I'm not even scared of Colgrim. Famous last words right there. I'm a little bit scared of Colgrim. Here. Just pass. To clear my name and restore my freedom, I will serve. 
I'm not that scared of Fulgrim. They get it by two. Get the double last say coming off a nice bleed too. Look at that. Look at that. I don't want you. Pretty much everything here is better than this. Except for that. Okay. There's hope. Give me a uh, vial. Oh. Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. I mean, it is four points. We hit that on adrenaline, start going. Vesemir pops it off. I think what they're trying to do is uh, revive one of those. That's kind of scary. And they get... They get one. Do I ever just float him? I'll play this so that, you know, we have time to think about it. suppose we do this now and then we actually get doesn't matter it, it might matter though if they go and they play Vilg and we take out a bronze so I'll boost the bronze yeah we're doing alright and just for max value to show you guys normally you gotta play this a little bit smarter than I did and uh you gotta you gotta keep something to boost him up, but that was pretty, pretty good for us. Alright, we have another game here with... Fruitsy is good this time, okay. So basically, a lot of points against a lot of points. We might have a bit more control than them. Let's put him back, and then... Probably the same with you. We just get the max carryover stuff. We don't have to go first. I guess they just want a free round off it. Iterin. That feels like a round three thing to me. Maybe we just don't contest it at all. We'll take Erland as well. This <laughs> nuts. Again, it's not that big of a deal. I think I want to focus on a big duel. I feel like they're going to get tall at some point. We want answers. We got to be careful that we actually don't get tempoed on at turn 7. Usually it takes Thrive a bit longer than that to get started. So we have some luck here, you know. I'm going to be keeping the Witchers. The fact that we're getting both sets of Larva out in round one tells me that we're in a good spot as well. Mutation probably stays for now. Then again... If I don't play something serious, then 
they'll likely just pass there and they're about 20 points ahead of me so here we'll put you back this is a relatively slow play as well yeah i'm gone what goodbye So used to people pushing them, I guarantee that they're just firing all cylinders in round one just to stay ahead, but doesn't mean it's over. Thrive, when they bleed, if they can get everything down, it's pretty nasty. I am going to put Peller away for this one. Do we have any bricks? I can fix them. I'd like to have my carryover Kyrsaren, but... Could just be a thinning turn. They want to give the illusion of a bleed. Then you see scenario. Ah, okay. That's a pretty big Yigurn. <laughs> What do we got? I could go for Quen into a Witcher. First, I'm going to take this one. What I'm most worried about is if I chip away at this armor for four whole turns times two, and then they just play Osral, which they likely have if you're playing all the Thrive. Then it was all for nothing. Yeah, we need engines on the board yesterday, so here. Let's go for other stuff. Forget about the Jaegerin right now. Because I actually need points. When they're bleeding, I can't just be chipping into armor. I got a 12 slam on deck though, so we'll use that when we can here. Probably just start stacking the melee row primarily, and then just so we have a backup. Because if they play a drowner, they push back Beringer onto an empty row, it's really bad. And, uh,. Getting any of this? You understand a word I'm saying? Should be alright. Gotta make this premium next. Especially with the shield, it would look really cool. They're not taking me seriously. Did I put back my Peller? Wow. We did. It's funny. <laughs> Can we get it? We should. We should try. Hit the mark. We aim above the mark. Actually, that's even better. Just kill it. Kill it for 10. It temples ahead. Ah, I wasn't going to click you anyways. Don't worry. This is the one that you wanted. I demand satisfaction. Trust. Now. And just to be salty, you know? Just bow.
I really want to keep Keldar for round three and the trio, so I think I'm gonna go for the Vesemir play first. Yeah, Geralt's okay. Actually, no, we gotta play this now. The more you know, the less you blunder like a buffoon. So we're gonna get six damage unless we miss. I have to use leader. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. I think we keep card at this point. You think you'd want to defend this, if anything. Let's get that carry over, boys. Yeah. So I got trio for round three. Eight, eight, and seven. Now we got Leo. Heat wave. Heat wave for Osril. We just gotta draw all these things. Okay. This goes back. And I'm gonna use this for consistency if we need it. This has to go back. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do a little shuffle here. It's okay. Don't ever expect your opponents to line up. Back one. Two, this looks like a game-winning hand, I'm telling you. Hey, I can see Care Seren from here. They did play control, though. They have Deregere, which is actually a great thrive. Pugo's not bad either. I think they go taller than this, so... We don't even need to stack a certain row for a certain reason either, so we're just gonna keep this like that. Just in case they have a 4p damage, we'll just do that. We're up by 20 points, we got the Heat Wave. Leo's not great. Leo would have been good in round 2 if they bled in like crazy, but at 7 provision, still plays for a lot of points. Creating the five plus the f whatever it is boosted to, you know. I could just heat wave this, but you know. One more time. Now, try throwing three. Oz rolls next. Hundred percent. Fairly close. Heat wave does play for a lot of points. And we got a rack of swarm coming up here next. If they can get the assembly line down, it's not a good thing at all. But we have a bit of control, and it's going to go a long way. So we're going to keep both of these in hand. And, uh,. We might need to get around a defender, so I'm actually going to hold on to Peller for right now. Sort of start fishing for a heat wave. This play and this play with the Adept is really good. I could just take an Adept off the Kai or Saren. Yeah, we just really needed heat wave. Because usually this deck likes to set up a strategy in round one and bring it back later, but... It's one of those things. I don't want to get Pred Dive on me, so I I can't just play Griffin Witcher and boost him up with Crystal Skull. We have to go in with something a bit more secure here. So we're going to go in with that. Let's take Quen out. I'll put back the trio guy, Mr. Lambert, and uh, should be all right. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. 
Now we'll go sky high with it. Just see what we can get done here. Can't see me getting any better than this. Once I chip it down to a four, I'm willing to work with it. We gotta get rid of the Kiki though. This deck benefits so well from going wide, we gotta be careful. Uh, something that I'm guaranteed to get at some point is probably gonna be one of these. I'd like to do the dual thing, but maybe not first. Pretty sure we gotta we gotta go in with uh, this strat right away. Start getting some payoff here. Hopefully they don't have four damage themselves. Probably just playing on cell phone. These days, not a lot of people get salty in DC. I find people usually play it through. Yeah, this is the one I'm most afraid of. I gotta keep them going strong, don't I? I could get away with maybe doing a Keldar around here and then Trio later. We have the framework for Keldar. Why would you hit that one of all things? I guess you're gonna kill it. But okay. Sure. Go on, see yourself with garlic, see what that gets you. I gotta play in one more turn to get the most value out of the Griffin Witcher. I think what I'm gonna do though is just take Peller. Just throw card. Then we'll probably have to play Kyra Saren just in case we need to pass in round two if we do take the win. Alternative could be just playing Vile and not taking damage on anything. You could have killed him. Yeah. Let's boost up on Seus now. Flip this in case they don't notice. I'm getting up to three points per turn, but we're likely going to be hitting ones. At least I get to kill one off and then, you know. Glusty here. That's cool. Less ones to look at. It actually tempos. We'll 
We'll just flip it back. I guess it's going to be the best one that I'm going to get, right? Because they're going to keep just adding. Here. Let's see if we can actually just get out at this. Abusive, man. With last card Peller, I can't play games, you know? And their short round game might be whack. Here, Peller goes. He goes too. I think I bleed. We could just win off of Erland at the end of the game. Okay. Let's go for the actual points. This doesn't get me ahead, so we'll pass on that. Huge point swing here, and another one here. I just need either this or this. I think Erland would be better. Gotta watch out for Pred Dives. We gotta watch out for Curse of Corruption. Sometimes they have both. Because they have Glusty, I doubt they have Curse. The duel is really nice. This is actually a really good hand still. It's just, uh, Erlen gets more. I wonder if I... Yeah, it's fine. We'll look for him with this. I wonder if I should just take you out now. Incoming dive place for ten points. Wasn't expecting unicorns. Erland is good. Let's put back you, and we'll put back you. We've to rise above, go beyond, become more. If they have curse, they win. If they don't, they don't. That's what I think. Maybe we underestimate, but... There we are. 